Hello everyone, I welcome you to A Accounting Tutorials. Today we are beginning a new series on accounting for departments, that is departmental accounts. In this chapter, we will be looking at the basic concepts of departmental accounts, how we prepare departmental income statements, and how we make an accounting treatment for interdepartmental transfers as well. Okay. So when we talk of departmental accounts, it is a suitable system of accounting for most trading organizations operating several stores under one roof, with each stores dealing in a particular line of products or goods. Okay, this simply means that when you have a business as a whole, okay, so within the business you have different departments, okay, that deals with different products all together. So, for instance, you have a phone business, okay? So, your phone business. So, within this phone business, you have different departments. Let's say you have department A and department B. And it could be more than two departments. And this department A deals with infinite, okay? Infinite and department B deals with techno, okay? Techno phones. What we are saying is that these two departments will be preparing departmental income statement for this department separately, okay? The reason why we prepare the departmental income statement for the, each department is that we do this in order to ascertain the contribution of each department towards the net profit or loss of the business. Is that clear? So, for instance, when at the end of the period and you arrive at a net profit of, let's say, 5,000 dollars for department A and you arrive at 2,000 dollars for department B. So in all, the total net profit for the business as a whole, okay? The total will be, but mind you, let's assume that this business, which is the techno company, arrive at a net loss rather than net profit, okay? It means that the net profit for the business as a whole will be $3,000, okay? At the end of the period, when you prepare the account for the business as a whole, you will be happy just because you made a net profit of $3,000. Meanwhile, Department B makes a loss of $2,000, okay? So, we prepare the departmental income statement for each department to ascertain the contribution of each department towards this net profit. Is that okay? So, if we realize that Department B keeps making loss, Okay, then it will be prudent for management to close down Department B and shift the resources to Department A in order to increase the profitability of the business. Or management can decide to put measures in place to improve upon the profitability of this department, which is Department B. Is that okay? So basically, this is the concept of departmental account. Okay, and remember that. Because we will be ascertaining this net profit, you know, before we ascertain the net profit, we learned from our basic school that a selling price and its cost price is equal to profit. Okay, this is what we learned. Okay, so what we are saying is that anything relating to the sales of Department A should be located to Department A, and any cost. Okay, any cost related to Department A should be located to Department A. The same applies to Department B, okay? But sometimes, you know, this concept can be brought down by saying that there are the sales, you learn the cost of sales, then you arrive at the gross profit, okay? The gross profit. We arrive at gross profit, okay, and this sales is subject to adjustments 
the same as this cost of sales is subject to adjustment. And this adjustment will be done in the departmental income statement format. I will show this adjustment. Is that okay? So, if there is any expenses related to each of the departments, it should be located to side department. But sometimes there are expenses that are incurred by the department as a whole. Okay? Such expenses is what we call a common expenses. And such expenses cannot be located to a single department. Okay? Rather, it must be shared or distributed or appropriate between the two departments or the number of the departments involved. Okay? So, as I was saying, any expenses incurred by the business as a whole is what we call a common expenses. Common expenses. And these formal expenses will be sharing it between the departments by the help of what we call a basis of apportionment. We're looking at some common expenses and their basis of apportionment. After that, then we quickly look at the format of the departmental income statement. Okay, possibly we look at the interdepartmental transfers as well. Okay, so let's look at some common expenses and the are basis of apportionment one okay let's talk about insurance insurance could be a common expenses for all departments and this insurance its basis of apportionment is the value of item being insured okay if it is machinery if insured the value of the machine insured is what is going to be used at the basis of apportionment. So, value of item being insured, being insured, okay. Go two. We can also talk about insurance on building, okay. Insurance on building, okay. And this insurance on building, the building is on the floor, okay. So we are going to base on the floor area being occupied by the building to share the insurance on building, okay. So floor area occupied. We can also talk about depreciation on building, okay? So depreciation on building, okay? The depreciation is on the building, okay? And the, and the building itself is on the floor, okay? So if you still use the floor area occupied. We could have an expenses for rent and weight. The same floor area occupied. Just because the room you rented is on the floor, okay? So we use the floor area occupied as the basis of apportionment, okay? Good. So let's talk about wages and salaries. Okay, which number of employees as its basis of apportionment? Just because you pay wages and salaries to your employees and you based on the number of employees to share the wages and salaries between the departments involved. Is that okay? We can also talk about another expenses for canteen expenses. And this canteen expenses each basis of apportionment with the same number of employees. Okay, because this canteen expenses 
are spent on the employees okay so the number of employees in each department will determine how much canteen expenses should be located to each department is that okay we could also talk about maybe discounts discount allowed discount allowed okay we allow discount to our customers when we sell an item to them okay because discount is allowed on sales we use the sales proportion okay good we could also talk about discount received we only received discount when we made purchases from our creditors okay so we use the purchase proportion as the basis of apportionment okay so purchase proportion another expenses i'd like to talk about is advertising okay so advertising okay that is sales proportion because we advertise a product to sell is that okay so we use the sales proportion this thing i'm doing is just very simple for instance when we are to share an advertising cost okay and department a has a sales of maybe 2,000 and department B made a sale of 1,000 so if you are to share advertising costs between these two departments we are going to base on their sales proportion okay and this sales proportion because department A sells 2,000 and department A sells 1,000 dollars we can deduce that the ratio will be 2000 is to 1000 dollars this could be 2 is to 1 okay so if the advertising cost advertising cost is let's say let's say 1000 1000 dollars okay it means that for department A so that is the ratio for department A and B is 2 is to 1. A for 2 for department A and 1 for department B. So the total ratio is 3. So to calculate the advertising cost for department A, you have 2 out of 3 multiplied by the cost. Which is, let's, let's, let's assume that the cost is 600. Eight dollars, all right. Six hundred dollars. This means that Department A will be receiving four hundred dollars as an advertising cost. Okay. So when we come to Department B, okay, for Department B, the ratio will be one out of three multiplied by the six hundred dollars. That is going to give us two hundred dollars okay as advertising cost for department b so this is what i talked about the sales proportion purchase proportion and others okay so after looking at some of the common expenses and their basis of apportionment it is your duty to be able to know the trend of this concept so that you'll be able to identify the appropriate basis of apportionment for any common expenses you may meet in a question okay so after looking at all those things then let's look at the format of the departmental income statement as well okay so we are beginning with the format it is an income statement so departmental income statement and i told you we've learned uh, a format of a departmental income statement in a previous video so it is very easy for us to uh, continue from here so with the income statement, the concept here is the selling price minus cost price is equal to profit. This is what we learned in our basic school. Is that not it? So this selling price 
That's why we call sales. So my the, the cost price here represents the cost of sales. Okay. Which is the gross profit. I'm naming it gross profit because this is subject to adjustment. Okay. And this sales to is subject to adjustment. Okay. And this cost of sales is also subject to adjustment. And all these adjustments here will be made in the format. Okay. So this is what we are, we are about to do. After arriving at our gross profit, then we add other incomes. Other incomes. Okay. After that, then we less our expenses. Okay. To arrive at our what net profit or loss. So this is the dynamics of the departmental income statement. Just that we will be preparing it for each department in a columnar form. Okay. So let's see how we do it over here. So we assume that we have department A. Let's take it from here. We have department A, department B, and total. The total represents the column for the business as a whole. Okay. You said that this department is for effects. This department is for technical. Okay. So in Dallas, in Dallas. Okay. So per our equation, we begin with sales. Okay. The sales for each department, okay, and we sum it up to arrive at our total. After that, then we less sales return. Sales returns or return inputs, okay, when we, we make sales to our customers and the customers return part of the goods to us, we need to subtract it from the sales amount, okay. So we less it. Then we arrive at our net sales. We underlined once because we will still continue. We only underline it twice when we are closing the account. Okay. So this will be our net sales. Okay. Now let's look at the cost of sales. Let's look at the cost of sales. Okay. With the cost of sales, we begin with opening stock. So, we represent it with each department, then we bring the total. Under the cost of sales, we are beginning with an opening stock because we, for business, we anticipate that the business will keep moving for the unforeseen future. Okay, so if this year we are operating a business and there is some of the stock left at the end of this year, in subsequent year or the next year, that closing stock or the leftover stock in subsequent year, it will be um, an opening stock, okay, so that we begin operation with it. So we begin with the opening stock. And we may make purchases because this purchases will not be enough to meet our customers' request. So we will make another purchases. So we add our purchases. Okay. We add purchases. So the total will be here. Okay. When we add our purchases, if there is a carriage in us, okay, we add it. So there is courage in it. We add it and bring the filter. That is when we make purchases from our creditors or our suppliers and we are carrying the product to our purchases or our departments. That is the cost. We have to add it to form the cost on the sales. Okay? So if there is any return outputs or purchases return 
purchases returns. We have to bless it. Purchases return is when we make purchases from we made purchases from our suppliers and we decided to return some back to the suppliers because of certain mistakes. Such products should be less from the purchases amount, okay? In the total. Okay. So after that, when we less our purchases, we are going to arrive at an, an amount, okay? And this amount is what we call the cost of goods available. That's available for sale. Is that okay? After arriving at the cost of goods available for sale, then we less our process stock. Okay. This means that this is the stock. Of infinite and terminal respectively available for disposal or available for sale to our customers. Okay, so at the end of the period, if there is a closing stock, then we subtract it. So we less the closing stock in the total. Okay, so this amount could be the cost of sales or the cost of goods. It will only be cost of goods sold when there is a direct wages. So let's say costs of goods sold. That is when there is a direct wages. Then we add it. Okay, so direct direct wages. You have to add it. And that is when we add this the direct wages, and this will give us the cost of sale. Cost of sale, okay. And remember, the equation is sales and its cost of sales is equal to gross profit. Gross profit. Is that clear? Good. So now we arrive at our cost of sales. Okay. Now we arrive at our cost of sales. So let me bring it here. Cost of sales. In this cost of sales, we are going to take it from the net sales. Okay. To arrive at our gross profit or loss okay so this will be the gross profit or loss okay so this could be the this is the gross profit or loss after arriving at the gross profit or loss then we add other incomes okay that could be a discount discount receipt okay that could be a discount receipt and maybe possibly other incomes other incomes okay to arrive at So this is the total income, okay? Total income, okay? So after arriving at the total income, because of the order, I'm going to represent the total income at the top so that we subtract our expenses, okay? We are continuing from here, okay? So we represent the total income over here, okay? Total income. There will less expenses. Okay, for rating expenses. Okay, in the rating expenses, we could have the general expenses. The general expenses. Okay, so for 
quadrant A, quadrant B, and the total. Okay, and we could have rent and rate. And this rent and rate, I mean, it's a common expenses to be shared between the two departments by the help of the basis of apportionment, which is employee law firm. Okay, so for this, for this, and for this, that's the total. And when there is a bandit, the same thing. Let's say there is an insurance. And if it is the common expenses, we share it between them by their common expenses. Okay? We bring the total. If there is depreciation, If it is a common expenses, we share among them, okay? Then, we arrive at total expenses. Total expenses. We add the two to arrive at the total problem, okay? Then, we take the total expenses from the total income then we arrive at an amount and this amount is the next profit or loss okay so when we are about to prepare the statement of financial position we are not going to send this net profit or loss from this we will be sending the total okay the total column for the business as a whole the same thing applies to the closing stock Okay, we'll be sending the total when we are preparing the statement of financial position. For the statement of financial position, we prepared it for the business as a whole, combined. We don't separate it by indicating departments A or B. Okay, so basically this is the concept of a departmental account. In our subsequent video, we'll be taking a question and try to solve to enhance our understanding. And before we take that question, I will explain the concept of interdepartmental transfer before we take the question. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, make sure to subscribe to this channel. Okay, you like and comment as well so that you share this video for others to also benefit. Until we meet, I thank you for now.